live back in the wood, you see A woman and the kids and the dogs and me Okay guys, so I just got back. I got all my right ball joints now. So we're gonna start getting them pressed into the truck and uh, we'll uh, bring you along. Okay, so this, I'm doing the bottom ball joint first and I got my OTC ball, ball joint press here. I got the one cup on here that rests on the sleeve of the ball joint. Okay, a little bit bigger sleeve up here wider in diameter because that ball joint comes up through just a little bit and then a cap for it and my press and um, it went in pretty pretty good um, no issues I don't grease that when I put it in I put it in dry and I make sure I got good grease on my arbor but that's ready to come off so let me get it apart and I'll show you all right so this ball joint comes with a straight grease fitting and a plug so it leads me to believe that once you put the axle in the U-joint comes around, there's not enough room for a 90 degree fitting like this. But I'm going to try them. Because if I don't put a 90 degree fitting in there, could you imagine trying to get uh, grease into that ball joint? It's going to be pretty difficult. So I'm going to put it in. We'll test fit the the axle before I, you know, leave that in there completely. Um, if it fits, I'm going to leave it. If not, it'll have to go back to the straight which I really hope not also this one's got a retainer snap ring goes around here you can see that groove right there so I got my snap ring pliers here I'm gonna get that on I'm gonna throw in one of these 90 degree grease fittings and then we'll get on to the top one all right guys so this is a little trick that I do we know that this ball joint goes into a tapered shaft and we don't want this spinning we don't want the top one spinning so what I do so I put a bottle jack underneath the knuckle to put force up and it basically pushes this in tight hoping, hoping to stop the ball joint stud from spinning inside the knuckle this way it gets tight right away um, this one I'll impact on because I can get to it the top one I'll have to use uh, my long half inch ratchet to get in there and make sure it's good and tight so I turn the knuckle all the way the way it's going to want to turn anyways up against it stop that way when I put the jack underneath it it's not going to move and the jack kick out hopefully so let me get to it here okay as you can see it's going to hit pretty crappy design if you ask me so this is actually the it's holding the axle up so what I'm gonna do is grease that put the plug in it grease this one go ahead and grease the axle joint and put it all together that is a pretty poor design by engineers if you ask me um, you know what that basically means that means that this thing will probably get greased once maybe twice depending on how long I have the truck and then you know somebody at the lube stop isn't gonna put isn't going to turn this axle like that in order to take out a plug and put a grease fitting in. So this ball joint will probably never get greased once I'm once I'm done with this truck. Pretty crappy design right there. All right, let's get to it. Okay, I got the wheel hub wheel hubs back in and the axle nuts on. There's a torque spec on this, so if you're doing this, make sure you look it up because a lot of times you see you'll put one of these in and the bearing doesn't last very long a lot of times it's because it wasn't torqued properly um, some of these are a tapered uh, roller bearing with an inside and outside um, race so if it's not torqued properly it's either too tight where's the bearing out not tight enough it's kind of sloppy in there so just be mindful check yours out um, and ABS wire routing for your wheel speed sensor you know follow the factory way it's there for a reason like this has a double coat of insulation on it right in here on this side where it goes through this little heat shield and then it goes into a bunch of holders that you'll see here and then there's a spot here and then back up here uh, I didn't put it on the rest of this yet because I'm gonna put the caliper in place but next is gonna be the rotor I want to get that finished up and I'm leaving the tie rod till last so I can still move the 
the hub back and forth. But let's put the rotor on and we're going to tighten these bolts up. So I'm going to put a little lube on the studs here so that they go on good. And I'm going to add a little never seize in here so if I ever have to change this rotor out it's not going to be seized. I'll put never seize on here, in here, and a little bit real thin. Not a lot, just real thin layer all the way around here. Alright, I'll probably use the never seize as lube on here too. It may look like I only did part of the studs but I rolled it so never seize on the bottom side. Alright, so the rotor goes on then the dually adapter. That's what this is. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to look up a torque spec. I'm going to assume this is at least 100, but I'm assuming. So you, anybody watching this to do their own, should um, look it up also. But I'm going to get all this started in here. It's very important that this rotor is laying flat in there with no dust, no dirt, no nothing in here. Because that's actually what has it sitting perfectly, as perfect as can be, on that hub so you don't get any out around you know so um, that's where we're at next I'm gonna get all this on get all these nuts torqued down but you like I said you wanna probably look up your spec yourself make sure you're getting getting these torqued right um, you know don't, don't take torque specs for granted you know they're there for a reason I mean think about how much pressure is on this on this hub now because it takes the wheel and moves it out this much farther and that's a good bit of pressure so um, definitely definitely don't take your torque set specs for granted very important so I'm gonna get on this I'll get my torque specs I'll get it all set up I'll throw the caliper back on and we're about done on this side all right so one little note about mine when I do this you see my finger marks here and here and here that's how I know that I've done each one of these and make sure they're right and then I go back over them again and I make a little wider mark so just a food for thought caliper back in made sure my wires are all good double checked everything over now we're gonna put the wheel on alright guys so this side's done just a rinse and repeat you know same thing axle joints ball joints you know it's all back together new hub never sees on I'm gonna stick the wheel on It'll be all finished up all right guys there it is all back together so now that this is out of the way all finished up I'll be able to uh, get this thing out of my way and get on to picking up the one engine that's in the shop that I need for the f550 project so uh, Tomorrow I'll get this out of the way and start working on the other truck. So if you guys like what we're doing, give us that thumbs up. We appreciate it. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Leave your comments down below, guys, and we'll catch you on the next one. I got a shotgun, a rifle, and a four-wheel drive, and a country boy can survive. Country folks can survive.